From animals that survive after decapitation to creatures that can live for eternity, here are 10 animals that live on after death. Number 10. Decapitated Cockroaches Cockroaches are famous for a lot of reasons. First, because they are absolutely disgusting and freak people out. And secondly, because everyone knows that in the event of a nuclear holocaust, the only survivors left will be rats and cockroaches. But there is actually a third thing that makes cockroaches famous as well, and it's their uncanny ability to live without their heads. That's right, cockroaches can be decapitated and continue living for weeks. According to a biochemist at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, who studies the development of cockroaches, it's important to first understand why a human or another animal can't survive a decapitation. This may seem obvious, but the main reasons you die when your head is cut off are because you bleed to death, you can't eat without your head, and you can't breathe without your mouth. Plus, your brain would obviously be gone. But in the case of cockroaches, they don't really function the same way we do. Cockroaches do not have a large network of blood vessels like us humans. Instead, they have something known as an open circulatory system, and so there is not very much pressure inside the system. This means that when you cut the head off of a cockroach, their necks simply seal off by clotting. Because of this, they won't bleed to death. Plus, cockroaches don't breathe out of their mouths. They breathe through tiny little holes in each body segment. That means they can breathe without having a head. Plus, roaches apparently don't need their brains. The cockroach's brain does not control their breathing. As a result, when a cockroach is decapitated, it can simply keep on going because of all its functions will still work and oxygen is still carried directly into the insect's tissues without needing a mouth to breathe. The only issue is that eventually the cockroach will need to eat after maybe two weeks and then they will die because they can't eat anything without a mouth. Number 9. Bee. A honeybee might not be able to live after death, but they can still get their vengeance. What I'm trying to say is that even after a bee dies, it can still sting you. A honeybee can sting even after it's had its brains smashed. And it can even sting after the stinger has been removed from its body. This is because the bee's nervous system is extremely complicated and more decentralized than our own. If you were to somehow get a bee's stinger stuck in your body, the nervous system of the bee even after death will still work automatically to pump venom from the venom sac directly into you. The exoskeleton, muscles and nerve ganglion will still act just like they would if the bee were still alive. The only thing that the bee can't do is actively sting you. You have to be silly enough to poke yourself with the stinger. And after that, nature just kind of does its own thing. In fact, a lot of animals in the wild are instinctively aware of the bee stinger and its immortal power. The California jay scrub will decapitate the honeybee and eat its head, leaving the abdomen and the stinger behind because it knows that even in death, the honeybee won't stop stinging. Number 8. Octopus Arms Octopuses are definitely the coolest animals in the entire ocean. These are the true aliens on our planet, and there are so many different aspects of an octopus that makes them amazing, it's impossible to detail them all at once. But what we're here to talk about is how an octopus's arms, or their tentacles, can still react for up to an hour after being cut off from their dead body. They will even try to pick up food and feed a mouth that isn't there. This is because octopus tentacles are filled with an incredible number of neurons and nerves, and each tentacle basically has its very own brain. Not only can each arm work independently, but each sucker can also work independently. And a lot of this independence has nothing to do with the octopus's brain. Think of it like if your arms and fingers could do everything without your brain telling them to. So, when someone cuts off your arm, your fingers will still find your cell phone and start texting. It's basically the same thing with an octopus. Not only will an octopus's arms continue to move on their own after being separated from the host body, but if the octopus is still alive and has one of its tentacles cut off, it can simply regrow a new tentacle. It has regenerative properties that are far superior even to that of a lizard. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, the octopus can regrow its tentacles using a special protein called acetylcholinesterase. Humans actually have this protein too, but our stores are much less active than an octopus. Number 7. Salamander Regeneration Let's keep moving with regeneration. Octopuses and salamanders are two of the most capable animals on the planet at regrowing their limbs. But salamanders take it a step further. Not only can a salamander regrow an entire limb, 
but a salamander can regenerate parts of its major organs. A new study of the axolotl, a small aquatic salamander, has revealed that special immune cells called macrophages are critical for regenerating lost limbs. With this information, researchers are hopeful that they can somehow transfer it into the human system so that maybe one day we can regenerate our own flesh. According to an expert from the Australian Regenerative Medicine Institute, in the future we may be able to reverse engineer the power of salamanders into human therapies. But of course, we are a far way off from this science. Number 6. Headless Toad You have undoubtedly heard of the headless horseman, but what about the headless toad? A recent video has surfaced of a headless toad leaping about a Connecticut forest and it has apparently left scientists stumped. According to Global News, the adult toad was discovered in 2016 by a herpetologist at the University of Massachusetts. The toad looked completely healthy, with perfectly functioning legs and arms, but it was missing its eyes, nose, jaws and its tongue. It only had a small hole where its mouth should have been. Because it was early spring when the toad was found, it had probably just come out of brumation, which is the toad equivalent of hibernation. After posting the video of the headless toad online, nobody could come forth with a proper answer. The best theory is that the toad was attacked during hibernation, but its attacker didn't finish the job. Then, when the toad woke up, it just kept on living its life without its head. But you have to wonder what exactly is going on inside the non-existent brain of this toad. Does it know that it has no head? How does it even know where it's going? Another theory on how the toad lost its head but continued to survive is a little more disturbing. A wildlife veterinarian suggested that it could have been a parasite known as the flesh-eating toad fly larvae. This really nasty fly lays its eggs inside the soft tissues of a toad while it's hibernating and then when the larvae hatch, they eat the toad's flesh. The toad very likely could have woken up in the middle of this with its head gone. Number 5. Fruit flies in suspended animation Who would have thought fruit flies would be the first to master suspended animation? New research at the Florida Atlantic University is now saying that fruit flies can basically put themselves into a state of cryogenic sleep. Whenever the fruit fly senses low oxygen levels in its body, it can put itself into a coma-like state where it then stays for up to 72 hours. You might actually have noticed this before. If you've ever seen some fruit flies sitting in a bit of water as if they've drowned and then they just randomly got up and flew away, they were just in a state of suspended animation. And let me tell you why. When any creature's body gets low on oxygen, organs begin to function poorly and the brain begins to stop working. This is why you can suffocate to death without oxygen. In order to survive, flies have figured out how to put themselves into suspended animation to protect the neurons in its brain. The human equivalent of this would be if someone began to strangle you, or if you were oxygen deprived because of some environmental issue, like drowning, and rather than dying, you just put yourself into a suspended animation so that the cells inside of your brain didn't get damaged with the lack of oxygen. Then, you would wake up three days later and hopefully there would be more oxygen in your body. Number 4. Deadly Snake Heads Rattlesnakes are bad enough as it is. These horribly venomous serpents are an absolute menace. If you're a native of Texas, you have probably had at least one experience with a rattlesnake in your life. But you should know that these venomous creatures can indeed live after death. They are very similar to bees in this regard. An excellent example is from a recent story in 2018 when a Texas man narrowly escaped death after a decapitated rattlesnake sunk its fangs into him. According to the local news station, this fella had been working in his yard in South Texas on the weekend when his wife spotted an evil rattlesnake. It was a western diamond back. And to protect his wife, this guy leapt into action with a shovel and chopped off the snake's head. Everything seemed well and good, Everyone seemed safe, but then as he bent over to pick up the severed head of the snake, it struck out at him, sunk its fangs into his hand, and filled him with venom. According to the man himself, the head literally spun around just to attack him. This is obviously not a great situation to be in. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake is a very nasty bite and is potentially lethal. It causes blood clots and can make your kidneys shut down, while also causing internal bleeding, damaging muscles and causing the area around the bite to rot. If left untreated, the mortality rate is about 10 or 20%. As for the attack from beyond the grave, snakes are cold-blooded and can continue to function on impulse after death for a short time. This includes striking out even without a body. Number 3. Flatworm life after death How would you like to be able to regrow your head? 
Well, if you were a flatworm, you absolutely could. These little worms can regenerate their heads and tails after being cut into pieces. This is unlike other types of worms that can only partially regenerate body parts. Flatworms are special in that you can cut off any piece of the worm and it magically turns itself into a new worm. This is according to a molecular biologist named Jochen Rink. He claims that if you cut a flatworm anywhere along their length, the part of the worm that still has its head will grow a new tail, while the part of the worm that has its tail will grow a new head. You essentially get two new worms. The science behind this is obviously complicated. It basically involves signals and stem cells that can trigger the growth of new body parts when necessary. And apparently, with a bit of tinkering, flatworms can even be forced into growing a secondary head rather than a tail. In this case, it will be a two-headed worm, and each head will control one half of the body. You can even make a worm with no heads and two tails, which makes it a little confusing as to why these animals need a head in the first place. Number 2. The Immortal Jellyfish It's time to talk about the Immortal Jellyfish. It's one thing to survive in a brutal environment or to regrow some limbs when one of them gets bitten off, but it's something else altogether when you can literally live forever. There is only one miraculous animal that can do this, and it's a species of jellyfish known as the Immortal Jellyfish. It was first discovered in the 1880s in the Mediterranean Sea and has since become a pretty famous animal on Earth. It can literally live forever. First, the jellyfish starts as larva. Then, this larva develops from a fertilized egg. The larva will swim around for a while, then settle at the bottom of the sea floor where it grows into a cylindrical colony of polyps. After some time, the polyps will grow into animals that we know as jellyfish, and these jellyfish will grow into adulthood in just a few weeks. When fully grown, this jellyfish is only about 0.18 inches across. That's smaller than a pinky nail. You would basically never see this thing, and yet it has 90 white tentacles and is fully transparent. Just imagine being that small and having that many tentacles. But here's where the immortal comes into play. In response to physical damage, starvation, or anything that could threaten its existence, the jellyfish reverts back into a polyp. This polyp then starts the process of growth all over again. Basically, the jellyfish turns back into a baby, slowly grows into an adult, and then when it feels near death is near, it will transform back into a baby. In theory, a single jellyfish can go through this cycle infinitely and forever. Number 1. The Green Hydra The last on the list is an animal that doesn't actually live after death because it has devised a way to escape aging and therefore live eternally. But it does this in a different way to the immortal jellyfish. The immortal jellyfish goes through a continuous cycle of birth and regrowth. But the green hydra is a spindly freshwater polyp that can seemingly live forever without aging. Unlike almost every other multicellular species, the green hydra does not show any signs of deteriorating with age, according to research published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. You might wonder how scientists could figure this out. And it wasn't easy. Over a span of eight years, Researchers kept an eye on a massive group of green hydras in a closed environment and found no evidence of aging at all. And after this experiment, one of the researchers believes that the green hydra can live forever under the right circumstances. It doesn't need to live after death because it never dies in the first place. Of course, in the wild, these polyps do die all the time because of disease, predators, water contamination and all kinds of other external influences. But under the perfect conditions, the green hydra could really live for all time because it simply doesn't age. Do you think some of these animals might possess the key for immortality? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for stopping by. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon.